Whether you're using your knife for general EDC tasks or you're slicing and dicing in the kitchen, an inevitable part of putting your blades to work is an eventual dulling of their edges. When it comes time to resharpening your knife, one of the most daunting decisions you can make is figuring out which system best fits your needs and learning how to use it. To help simplify things, today we're going to be talking about three different systems, covering some pros and cons on each one, and just talking about their general use. But before we get to that, we take a look at our knife blade, figure out what it's made of, and talk about how that can affect how easy it is to resharpen your knives. Let's go take a look. While most blades are made from steel, not all steel is created equal. Qualities like corrosion resistance, edge retention, and wear resistance are all dependent on specific ratios of elements added to each batch of steel. What this boils down to is that one grade of steel can be significantly easier to resharpen than another, and if you're just getting started out, you might have a lot of difficulties if you try to tackle a higher end blade. I really recommend getting a learn on a more budget-friendly knife, such as this Kershaw Cryo 2, which uses 8CR13 MOV. Compared to some higher grade steels, it's not going to have quite as good performance, however it's going to be significantly easier to resharpen when it comes time to do so. Another added benefit of using a more budget friendly knife is that you won't have to worry too much about scraping up and denting up and damaging your nice high end knife while you're learning. If you're a little bit more concerned with performance and you don't necessarily want to stop a job halfway through to touch up your edge, you may want to consider spending a little bit more to get a higher performing blade steel. This is the Kershaw Federalist, which uses CPM 154. Compared to that 8CR 13MOV, it's going to be significantly more difficult to resharpen. However, the performance is going to be markedly better. Whichever way you end up going, you will need a sharpening system. So let's go take a look at those three different sharpening systems now. First up, we have the Kershaw Ultratech Diamond Hone. You can see this thing has an absolutely minuscule footprint, which makes it perfectly well suited for on the go and off the grid sharpening jobs. Inside the handle, you'll find a 600 grit, 4 inch long diamond hone, which is perfectly well suited for quick touch up jobs. Especially when space and weight are limited, this is a perfect choice that won't break the bank. Next up, we have the WorkSharp Precision Adjust Sharpening System. This is absolutely ideal for those looking to get very precise and repeatable results while maintaining a very minimal learning curve. This is a guided system, meaning that you clamp your blade here in the front, dial in whatever angle you want, and you can focus on grinding away on your edge nice and consistently, letting this whole thing maintain that angle for you. This pretty much eliminates any sort of variability in edge angle, leading you to some more consistent results. Last but not least are the Shun Combination Wet Stones, which come in a wide variety of different grits. Now, freehand sharpening is going to be hands down the most skill intensive thing I've shown you today, However, with some patience and dedication, you can develop some really good hand-eye coordination to get ultimate precision control over your edge angle and how much steel you're taking off that edge. If you're doing a lot of detailed precision work, you'll definitely benefit from getting a high grit finish on some of the finer stones they have for offer. Traditionally, you'll see a lot of people sharpening larger kitchen knives on these bench stones. However, you can touch up any blade of any size with any edge angle, even some stranger edges such as scissors and chisels. For everyday purposes, I really can't recommend this combination 400 and 1000 grit stone enough as it offers a very good balance between a moderate grit to reprofile your blade and a 1000 grit to really get a nice refined working edge. All these stones come with a nice silicone rubber base which hug onto the bottom of the stone and keep it from skidding around too much as you're resharpening on a flat surface. If you're after a little bit more of that ultra refined polished edge, this combination 3000 and 6000 grit stone is going to give you a very nice result indeed. Whichever of the shin stones you end up going with, they're all ultra high quality, very consistent stones which are going to leave you with phenomenal edges which are well worth the effort. Regardless of which system you end up choosing, sharpening is a skill that everyone who uses a blade can really benefit from. It doesn't have to be this big daunting thing that takes hours of dedication to really learn and master. You can stick to a simple handheld rod or even a guided system and get some phenomenal results. As long as you're getting your blade back in a better condition than when you started sharpening, you can get back to the task at hand and truly enjoy your blades. Thank you so much for watching. If you want more information about sharpening and knife maintenance, you can check out Kai USA. Otherwise, my name is Nico, and I'll see you in the next video.